Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, if you're a player of Elite Dangerous, you may have found yourself flying between the stars and needing to refuel. And to do this, you need to refuel at a certain class of stars. There's only a subset of stars in the game which are usable for refueling. And you might know the mnemonic KGB Foam, which tells you which star classes are allowed. Now, if you're an astronomer, you know the order better as O, B, A, F, G, K, M. And in either case, you might wonder, why isn't this in a more sensible order? Why are these letters randomly chosen from the alphabet and not in any sane order? And to understand this, you actually have to go back into the history of stellar classification. So the first example of spectral classification goes back to a guy called uh, Angelo Secchi, who was a Jesuit astronomer in Rome. And he started cataloging the spectra of various stars and he identified four major classes. So he called these classes one, two through four. And what he was looking at was the dark absorption lines caused by uh, various elements and in some cases molecules inside the stellar atmospheres. Now, a couple of decades later, a team started working on what would be called the Henry Draper Memorial Catalogue. It was a guy called Pickering, but more importantly, there was a person on his team called Wilhelmina Fleming. And she was doing most of the spectral work and decided that Secchi's classes were just far too coarse. So she further divided Secchi's classes. Class 1, for example, included the letters A through D. Class 2 included E, F, G, H, I, K and L with no J you'll notice. Uh, class 3 was M and Class 4 is N which didn't appear in this catalogue but they also identified a new group which would be the wolf rayet stars, those get the letter O. So at this point we actually have all the letters we need but we have more letters than what we need. Now around 1901, uh, Annie Jump Cannon was doing further work on this and she realised that the more logical order was to order these spectra based upon the black body temperature of the spectra before the lines. And uh, so she reordered this and then got rid of a bunch of classes which were no longer useful. And that's when we really get to our first example of the order, O, B, A, F, G, K, M. Now, when I was learning astronomy, I was taught the mnemonic, O, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. But given the huge contribution of women to this particular field, I, I feel uh, a more modern version is only boys accepting feminism get kissed meaningfully. But truthfully, only bad astronomers feel good knowing mnemonics. So while Annie had gone and simplified things by throwing away letters, there was still some need for granularity. And so what they started doing was adding numbers after the classes. So uh, what you would have is the most extreme blue stars would be O0 and as they got more towards the white they would go 1 through 9 and then you would get B class 0. So uh, the sun for example is a G2. So all these numbers they go from 0 to 9 and right down until you get to M. And for a while we started getting M classes that went above 9. You had M10 and M11 until brown dwarfs were added and that came in a paper from 1999 by Kirkpatrick which did a, who did a great job of actually digging through all the existing literature and figuring out which letters were actually available to be used and that's how elite dangerous players will know we have the L, T and Y class brown dwarfs. So how about some of those other letters? Well C got reused for carbon stars. Now for a while carbon stars also had R and N class but those kind of got absorbed into the C. They became C, R and C, N. There are S type stars which are uh, contain zirconium for example and then you have things like D for dwarfs. So there w not all of the letters were available. The uh, authors of the paper also rejected E as a possible letter because that would be confused with elliptical galaxies. They rejected I because it looked like the number one. So they ended up with four letters that they thought could be used. H, L, T and Y. And they decided to go with L because it was next to M and this was logically the next step down from M. T was proposed as the next step down. Now the differences here are all down to the spectra. So L-type stars, they start to show things like lithium, right? 
And lithium doesn't appear in regular low mass stars because lithium gets burned very, very quickly and it gets depleted in any star where the core convects. But in brown dwarfs, it doesn't matter because it doesn't get burned away. Uh, with the T type stars, you start to see things like methane. And in the coolest stars, the Y class, you start to see ammonia. The other thing you will see specified in a spectral class is a Roman numeral. So the Sun is G2V class and the V is Roman numeral for 5 and that indicates its brightness with the brightest objects being having a 1 and the faintest objects being around 7. Main sequence I think is about 5. Of course, you know, the range has changed and expanded over the years as brighter and fainter stars have been found. So there is now like a 1A class for hypergiants and then there's actually a 0 class for even brighter objects than that. And it's also worth noting that because of stellar evolution, a G-type star when it expands into a red giant may become an M-type star or in some cases there are L-type giants which are regular main sequence stars that have basically gone through their hydrogen burning phase and they're now getting ready to end their life. Anyway, these stellar codes, they're really supposed to be a shortcut, a shorthand that astronomers can use to get a rough idea of what color and size the star is. Only by looking at it in great detail do they actually get the real clues about what processes are going on inside a star. And the more you look, the more oddballs you find. So you will find stars with extra letters added. Some will have chemical symbols added to their code to show that there are stronger lines versus others. And every single one of these represents an interesting puzzle to be solved as to its origin and as to its current makeup and potentially its future evolution. But yeah, this uh, strange code OBAFGKM it uh, all dates back to some astronomers at the turn of the 20th century. And that's why we still use it in Elite in the 31st century. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.